This week's Pilch Point with Avram Pilch is proudly powered by PureVPN. The best way to protect your privacy online is with PureVPN. You can hide your online activities, say goodbye to regional restrictions, and improve your streaming quality. Plus, it's available for almost all of your devices. You can get a special price and a 31-day money-back guarantee right now by going to pilchpoint.live slash purevpn. I'm going to continue to enjoy that new music. Anyway, uh, so... Yes. um, More AI, Avram. So much, so much to talk about. There's like five things I'd like to talk about at least. Uh, and I want to I want to apologize because I'm not AI, so I'm a human that has a cough right now. So if we had like a really great use of AI, would be to real time filter out my coughs. That would be <laughs> that would be great. That would be a, that that to me would be a good use. Like help the human. Um, uh, so, so so we should put we should put an AI into my mixer over here and put a seven second delay on the show so we can uh, take care of you live. Yeah, Got I mean. It. Yeah, if it's, I mean, if it's really fast, uh, maybe it could, you know, if you had a 4090 or something, maybe running it, maybe it could just like, also could make my lips look like I'm not coughing too. It could like rewrite my lips. Speaking of rewriting lips, I gotta, I, I'm just gonna throw this out there. Have you seen the pepperoni hug spot video? Oh my God, have I? I, I okay. So I saw the article from you and then I grabbed. I grabbed it and I started sharing it to everybody. I I'm like, you've got to see this. This is the, this is ridiculous. I feel, it's, I feel like it's like family, like the, but with cheese. I feel like the, I, I feel like the audience should see this. I feel like the I feel like the audience should see this. Do we? I don't I don't know. Is it like a a copyright violation for us to show an open AI an AI YouTube video? Um, not if we are commentating on it. Um, if also, you, I know the, also, I know pizza later, the person who wrote it. And I don't think they would mind when I say, okay. I know them. I'm like, they're not if a you, personal friend, but I interviewed them. If you, yeah. if you want to talk about it, I will get it. I want to talk. I mean, I know we were supposed to talk about something else and we will in a second, That's but fine. you got to like, if people see this, they're going to, they're going to, they're going to plot. So this is a video that was made uh, a commercial for a fake pizza joint called Pepperoni Hug Spot that was completely uh, made with with AI, with like five different kinds of AI <coughs> too. So a little bit of cheating going on <coughs> in the sense that it's not just one AI bot that the person said, make me pizza commercial. <coughs> they had um, one thing called Runway ML uh, Gen 2, which they used for the video part. Uh, they used another thing called 11. Uh, they used ChatGPT to write the script. They used 11 uh, to come up with the name of the joint, Pepperoni Hugspot. <coughs> they used um, MidJourney for some of the images in the video. And they used 11 Labs for the voice and something else for the music. Uh, and then they took <coughs> all of that and they put it into a video editor and edited it together. So that was the human part. Um, but... Uh, but still, uh, when you see this video, you'll not no humans, no actual people or or uh, talked, wrote anything, <laughs> appeared as actors, uh, you name it. It's all AI generated. So can we can we show it? Give me just a second. I've almost got it. I'm okay. making sure Do that you I've need got the URL. It. I have it. I have it. No. I- I got it. I just want to make sure that I had it in, uh, in like full, uh, full quality. All right. Let me add it into the thing. Where did I put it? I think I put it on my desktop. All right. We will be able, let me make sure that I've got the audio set to play. On the stream. Yeah, okay. Hmm. All right, here we go. We'll be able to talk while it's playing. Are you ready for best pizza of life? Bring friends down to Pepperoni oh, Hug Spot. Best pizza of life. Our chefs make pizza with heart oh, and special touch. 
cheese, pepperoni, vegetable, <laughs> and more secret things. My absolute vegetable. favorite part. Need delivery? Coming. Pizzas when come fast. His eyes. Look at his eyes. Pizza, eye. eye. pizza yeah. magic. Eat pepperoni hot spot pizza. Your Just tummy say thank you. Your mouth say. Ooh, look at mm. her mouth. Pepperoni Ooh, hot her spot. Lip. It's like family, but with more cheese. Ugh. Like family, but with more cheese. It, I mean, that's kind of brilliant, though. That's a really like that's really good. Our group has been saying that. Props. Our group has been saying that all week because of this. Like family, but with more cheese. <laughs> I mean, they. Th I mean, uh, pizza later. The the person who did this, they. Um, I I briefly got to email with them about it. Um, uh, was uh, you know, did a great job. They have a. Um, it's awesome. Speaking of, real quick, give me a prompt for a video that you that you would want to make, but it has to be a really short video with no sound. Oh no! Like, um, two, like two seconds. I, I I don't know. Uh, let's see. How about a seagull stealing a hot dog? Try... Seagull stealing <laughs> hot dog. Okay, so. I'm going to run this through the text to video playground. Okay. And uh, before we're we're done, I'm going to show you what it comes out with. It takes excellent. Like, it's going to take like 30 seconds to make. Um, so you can see that there's a lot of stuff, cool stuff going on with AI. Um, and Scott and I earlier uh, were talking about an AI that you can run locally uh, instead of going to ChatGPT. But let's be honest, ChatGPT is sucking a lot of the air out of the room right now. Um, ChatGPT is becoming sort of like the Kleenex uh, of, you know, the Kleenex of AIs, right? So a lot of That's people a say, I want ChatGPT. A lot of people say they want ChatGPT. They just mean they want a chatbot. They don't necessarily mean, hey, it has to be ChatGPT specifically, but it's become a term, right? Uh, so um, one thing that maybe folks don't know is that ChatGPT is run by a company named OpenAI. And OpenAI has a <coughs> sorry, um, OpenAI has an API, and where the real money from OpenAI is made is not from you going to ChatGPT because they give that for free, and then they've got like the plus account that costs I don't know what twenty bucks a month or something, uh, so you can get priority access and get uh, GPT for the latest model. But what they really want to be doing and are doing is other people incorporate the GPT-35 or GPT-4 language model that OpenAI makes into their own websites and programs. Um, <coughs> and to do that, they need to use an API. And the API costs money. Uh, you <coughs> can get a free API key at um, OpenA OpenAI with maybe, depending, one account I signed up at $5 credit, one at 15 uh, and, you know, it's pretty generous because sometimes a, a request will only cost like less than a penny. But after a while, you use it up. Um, and it could be used up pretty fast if you're doing a lot of stuff. Um, so it's, and, and you, it, it can be cost prohibitive. So uh, a person, uh, a computer science student who goes by the name X Techie um, in Europe came up with a concept and put together a GitHub repo called <coughs> sorry, GPT for free. Uh, what is GPT for free? GPT for free is something where you can use open AI's uh, services in your own bots without paying for them. How now, and the ex techie received <coughs> a cease and desist letter from OpenAI saying, you better take down your GitHub repo or we're going to sue you. Um, but here's the interesting thing to note. XTechie is not how, how XTechie gets the data from op, uh, that OpenAI provides is not using OpenAI. So there is an interest, it's not directly using OpenAI's, OpenAI. Uh, some articles that were written about this uh, before mine said that 
ex techie had hacked it or found like basically implying that ex techie like stole some or broke into like OpenAI's API. That's not what happened. Here's what happened. Um, so there's a number of sites. I want to share my screen because it's just a lot easier to see it this way. Um, and when I do, by the way, you're going to see what we talked about earlier. This is our, this is our uh, <coughs> video. Oh man, I didn't eat the hot dog. Not very good, huh? Does it look like you stole a hot dog? I don't know. It doesn't look like much, right? My favorite one was I did a Godzilla eating pizza one, but anyway, we'll let that run in the background. It, so it's anyway. like family, but with more cheese. Yes. So, so anyway, um, so if we go, I'm going to leave that in the background for now. And there are a number of sites out there, uh, like that are actually known to be using open AI's backend and you can use them. So one it's called you, and that's the search engine. It's actually, it's an AI search engine that it uses. It doesn't use GPT-4, it uses GPT-3.5, but, you know, it's a search, it, it uses it. Um, similarly, let me see, we'll actually go to, oh, my video's done. Let's see. Not the best. And by the way, if you change the seed number, you get different results. I got better ones with better results, but... It's... Um, it's eating and there's pizza. So, I mean. Oh, oh, did you notice the plagiarism, by the way? Um, there's Shutterstock logos uh, here. I see that. Um, um, yeah, so, anyway, we won't even. We've talked previously about how AI is a plagiarism engine. So, I won't get into that. Um, so, anyway, if we go to uh, GitHub's uh, GPT for free page, you're going to see that he lists um, a bunch of sites that use the different models like Forefront AI um, is one. And you can go there and you can log in and you can like, it's Forefront is actually interesting because you can name a persona or something like Kool-Aid Man or something. And you can, you know, you know, I don't know. I'm not asking a good question, but anyway. <laughs> it's always a good time for Kool-Aid. So what... What does this have to do with getting free free API? So what it is is each of those sites has its own service where, oh, it's a little, can you guys see it's a little, I think my thing may be a little blurry. Anyway, uh, each of the sites that you go to has its own little API, right? Its own internal API that it's using. So what GBT for free does is it goes into, I'm looking at the code here, and I've run this. It'll go to like you.com and what it will do is it'll actually go to like you.com slash API slash streaming search. And then it will put the prompt in there as a parameter. So that's what you.com uses and for its own internal like use. In other words, when you visit the page on you.com in the background and you submit a query in the background, it's sending a message to you.com slash API slash streaming search with your query, which then processes it, sends it to open AI, gets data back from open AI and displays it. What, what uh, the scripts at GPT for free do is they intercept that. They, uh, the way that X techie described it is, it's as if you opened Forefront, YouTube, you know, you uh, <coughs> or other sites like this in like 30 tabs and you visited them yourself, except you're visiting them and you're not seeing the website. You're not getting the ads. You're not getting the, you know, they're not making money off of you. Uh, and we could certainly argue about that, whether or not that's morally wrong, whether that is, you know, stealing or whatever. Uh, but whatever he's doing, it's actually not to open AI. It's to all these companies that use open AI. And by the way, they could very easily stop that with basic API security. Like you.com over there, they could fix it so that if anybody tries to go to that URL and they're from an outside IP address, it just doesn't respond. Like, that would be, you know, there's lots of ways of protecting 
an API endpoint. That's what it is, right? It's called an API endpoint. And that's, it, it's, it's really just that simple, right? But, you know, what's, so it's just getting that data back for you. And then you can use that data in your own bot. Uh, and, uh, and, you know, you have access to GBT4. Um, uh, Xtechie also has on his GitHub page a link to his own uh, bot that he's created with this. But there's some very aggressive uh, ads on there that are like popping up and wanting you to do stuff that might be risky. Uh, so I don't know if it's necessarily a good idea to go to those his his bot right now. But if you want to install the software and run it on your own computer, which I have done, um, it it works it works perfectly. Um, so uh, he decided he's not going to comply with OpenAI, and he's going to tell them that if they have a problem, they should write to GitHub and ask GitHub to take it down. Um, and there's a DCMA, DMCA, Digital Millennium Copyright Act complaint, which it really isn't. And there's a really interesting question, which is, do they really have a legal standing to tell someone to stop doing something that is not being done to them? And he said that if like these <coughs> other sites come to him, like you.com, or he said there was another one called Find, P-H-I-N-D, that asked him to take down the script for them, and he already took it down. But FYI, if he can do it, so can they, so can anybody else. So uh, just having him remove the repo uh, does nothing. There's also a Discord where people are talking about this stuff. But the bottom line is these sites are basically, uh, he's just basically scraping, sending a request to them and scraping the data back, scraping the data that they send back rather than visiting their website to get it. Um, so what do you think, Scott? Is that like, does... Does OpenAI really have a leg to stand on here? I mean, obviously, they're a big company with lawyers, and this guy's a college student, so he's probably not going to. If if they were to actually go to court, I don't know if he would he would prevail. But so there is a Supreme Court case with precedent on this. Um, uh, Microsoft was the um, the company that was. Suing, I don't remember who they were suing, but it was for data scraping on LinkedIn. Um, and the ruling was that uh, data scraping is legal on any information that is made publicly available uh, uh, without like a sign up. Which is why you see on LinkedIn now, when you go to a profile, if you're not signed in, you basically get, hey, you should probably join LinkedIn, uh, was because of this case in particular. It was some sales thing that was scraping LinkedIn. I don't remember. Um, so, I mean, there's literally, there's literally precedent on this. Um, so it should be interesting. And, uh... Instagram uh, got smacked down on this too. They ended up having to change their API um, for images based on location, I think, because somebody was scraping data off of that. They ended up having to change their API. Um, interestingly, both topics that have been on the show in the past at some point. Um, but anyway, so I mean, there's literally... There's precedent on this, so. But here's the interesting he's, question. Oh, he's got he's got a lot of leg to stand on on this. Also, it's not. But OpenAI also, it's not their API that he's uh -huh. doing it to. Right. So what they're like, in his opinion, if someone was to come after him, it should be, like the sites that he is mm -hmm. crawling that he's getting mm -hmm. it from. Those sites are customers of OpenAI. But that, but he's not, he's not touching open AI. He's not contacting open AI server. Yeah. But also yeah. like they should protect, they should protect their data. Now, uh, I mean, <clears throat> interesting <clears throat> question will come up again about AI is all the machine learning that's going on, the training data being taken from everywhere on the web, like is being scraped. And is that yep. like, is that okay? Um, you know, 
when they're using it as intellectual property. Uh, anyway, uh, here it is running on my computer, uh, GPT for free. Uh, I, I loaded it up. Uh, so we'll ask it a quick question. And this should be going to going to another site like you.com and then getting it from, uh, if it's you.com, then I think it's going to be GPT-35. Uh, let's see. Um, so I'll just ask a really simple question and see what it says. So, well, oh, unable to fetch response. Let's see. Uh, it might work. Let's, ah, yep, yeah, it works. Uh, so you see, mm -hmm. uh, sorry if it's, if it's appearing blurry to, blurry to folks, but there, but like it got me an answer. So, um, so you see like it works and there's an interesting question, which is, first of all, the bottom line though, is these sites are practicing core security. They could just yeah. solve this problem very easily. Like, I mean, yeah. it'd be one thing if he was just going to their webpage and scraping it, but he's going straight to their API. So yep. like they could very easily stop this. Like, like they just, and he said, he told them this and they don't care. So like, don't, you know, which don't makes it do their problem. With, not, not, uh, open AIs. Yeah. Yes. It's now, their problem. So why open now, AI is getting involved is because it makes them look bad. Yeah. Uh, and they're their customers. Now but open, I, just, I really open AI may could change their API usage policies, uh, which is what Instagram did. Um, how, how would that help? How would that change things? So if they change their usage policies, then they could go after you.com for um, violating API usage policies by making their API insecure. Ah, that's interesting. I think OpenA I think OpenAI doesn't want to do that because they they want uh -huh. you know I mean I think part of the thing is he he kind of courted their I mean look he's not the only one doing this but he kind of courted sure. their ire because he used um, you know he called it GPT for free and I guess they feel oh the word GPT is not trademarked in any way mm -hmm. and could and lots of things you are using GPT in them uh, yeah. so. But he courted their ire, I guess, by using the term GPT, um, uh, by using GPT for free. And then the reporting on this said that he was getting it directly from OpenAI. And this obviously is a threat to their business model, so, right. sort of. So I understand why they're not happy. Sure. But at the same time, uh, you know, whether they have a footing to, to stop him if he had proper le legal yeah. representation, interesting question. And the bottom line is they can't stop everyone. Right. So, because um, so because this will be here's the thing, all we got to do is start forking this this GitHub repo. It'll be all over the internet. Done. It's huh? all it is all over. Yeah, it's, I think it's already. So yeah. so not so it, it it doesn't matter. And what he figured out how to do, I'm sure others could too. So sure. you know, it's so it, it's, it's really like what it was so difficult. Honestly. I've done this before. Obviously not with OpenAI, but I've done this before. I've I've done well, done lots of data scraping things, but I've I've hit APIs um in our uh writing portal <laughs> for plugheads. Um I'm using I'm using an API that's not documented but it's publicly available uh for a headline analyzer. Right. So the thing is, I mean, in a way it's, it's not nice because like, you know, you.com and all these other sites are paying money right. for these, you know, this API usage on yeah. open AI. And I wouldn't, so you're, I, I don't know that I would do that. The thing that I'm using is just a publicly available thing. Um, right. but I mean, they've set themselves up for it. They've, They've set the API in such a way that it's way too easy to get a hold of. Now, there's very little that you can do to make it impossible, right? But they've made it too easy. Hmm. I mean, maybe OpenAI could do more to make it easy to like limit, you know, on their end. I don't know. I don't know if there's a way that like I don't know you could have what encrypted. If, what if I want to? 
what if I want to build it into an application? Now my, my IPs are distributed. There's all kinds of stuff. I don't know. What if there's like a key? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, yeah, it's, oh, it's hard to say. Or maybe... you. There are keys. That's... Right? Well, I know, but there are keys. So I don't, I don't know. I, I guess, yeah, it's, it's hard to say. Yeah. Who knows? They've, right. but, open AI does have some really, really modern, pretty sophisticated uh, API security, but <laughs> they've but given, people are the, using it and they don't, they've given the key yeah. to the house to somebody else and that person left it at McDonald's with the address. <laughs> I... <laughs> yeah, that's 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 the best way to put it. So <laughs> that's that's our that's our our story. And the final thing I was just going to say is the thing that you and I tried um which is called um MLC uh LLM uh which stands for was it a mo- um was it model language compression something like that mm. well, um uh is compressed is a compressed is a compression uh allows you to install um a local large language model that is nowhere near as good as chat gpt um but you can run it completely uh on even on an iphone um on, on iphone uh compilation third, uh, uh, uh all right compilation um an iPhone 12 or above, um, and on even on an, an, on a PC with integrated graphics. Here I have it running locally on, and it's the data is like you know five or six gigabytes. Um, and if you <coughs> if you look here on my screen, I asked it a ridiculous question. I asked a simple question and gave me a ridiculous answer. So um, I don't know if you can read. It looks sort of blurry on my end. So I don't know. Can you? Can you read what it says over here uh, where I asked it, who was the fifth president of the U.S.? Uh, the fifth president of the United States was James Madison. He was the fourth president of the United States. Huh. That took an interesting turn. Right. Okay. So this is messed up in so many ways. First of all, first of all, um, it previously told me that Thomas Jefferson, I asked it this afternoon, and it told me Thomas Jefferson was the fifth president. Um, and I believe that the reason it said Thomas Jefferson was the fifth president is, and I may be screwing up my history here, wasn't it, how many, <coughs> wasn't one of his terms the fifth term of the fifth presidential term? Which, but that's not how people describe it. People would say the fifth president is James Monroe. Uh-huh. She was the fifth person to be president. I can probably but, tell you what it said. The fifth president of the United States was Thomas Jefferson. He was the third president to be inaugurated after the end of the American Revolutionary War in 1801. That's the answer it just gave me. American Revolutionary War ended in 1801? Uh, or I mean, he was inaugurated in, in 1801. Oh, oh okay. I, the, so, anyway. the sentence structure is not great, but I think that's yeah, what it's it, getting at. Anyway, it has a lot of problems. Uh, it also said that plug hits, plug hits is a, um, is an electronic music festival yes. run by DJ plug. <laughs> yeah, it did. So, and it said that I invented a contact lens with a built-in camera, but it also said that you were an engineer at Google and uh, so, so so the anyway. I, the iPhone 14 said you were an engineer at Google the iPhone 12 said uh. I guess it depends how many t- it'll give you something else if you ask again probably um so once again showing that these uh that all these bots including ChatGPT make stuff up um so some make it up more than others, but all you need is for it to make one thing up for it to be bad. So yeah, true. Anyway, true. <laughs> so the technology is is uh, evolving. Um, I got but, uh, I got Thomas Jefferson as the answer on the iPhone 12, but with absolutely no explanation. Just the fifth president was Thomas Jefferson. Period. It's 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 really insistent that it's not 
James Monroe. It never says James Monroe. I've never heard that interpretation of the presidential <laughs> numbers before. Today. I mean, I mean, uh, if we if we want to get down to you know, the oddities of the numbers of presidents. I mean, there's all kinds of ways to get weird because there were, what, 11 presidents before the Constitution that aren't counted in our current numbering scheme? <laughs> so, I mean, right. I mean all it, kinds yeah, of you weird. Can, you can, but yeah, this you isn't one of them. Of, <laughs> right, right. I mean, that's just so, that's just so, that was, that's just so weird. Like, anyway. So, right. So all these things are weird, but it's interesting that they were able to compress the model to fit on a local device. Yeah. All of these things make horrible mistakes and, uh, in short, and, uh, someone has found a way to get the GPT stuff for free and is being threatened with a lawsuit. End of story for today. <laughs> you can read more about this on Tom's where we have an article about the open AI, uh, lawsuit threat. And uh, to free ChatGPT for free, and we have an article about um, NLC LLM, and we have an article about how to do a two-second uh, video uh, with the text command, and we have an article about <coughs> um, uh, Pizza Hugspot uh, video. So more to, more to come as I'm working on more more stuff uh, because it's of the moment, <coughs> and I like do I like it when I'm doing stuff where I'm actually installing it on my computer. Mm -hmm. What frustrates me is when I'm just using other people's sites like a passive consumer. Uh, what I hate the most about, about AI, about uh, generative AI, is the very concept that people should just be passive consumers. Don't code, we'll do it for you. Don't, mm -hmm. don't, write, it, don't write something, we'll do it for you. Just sit here and be a bump on a log. Uh, be like the people in the wall E future where you're just sitting there stuffing <laughs> your face and doing nothing, right? Because the, the AI will do it for you. Like but that but stuffing your face with the, the plate, not the pizza. Right. So, you know, uh, so, you know, if you can take this technology and use it in a creative way to like take advantage of the fact that uh, what this is real AIs are really good at, they're not good right now at finding actual truthful facts and presenting them in a in a in an artful way. And they're not actually creative. What they're really doing is mashing stuff up. Mm -hmm. But what they are really good at is interpreting data that already exists. They are, I mean, not perfect, but they're much, much better at things like transcribing audio, recognizing yeah. images, you know, stuff like that. So taking things that you've created and making them digital making them interpretable like that is a fantastic use of ai we should all you know good let's do it well anyway <laughs> interestingly tonight's pilch point uh if you're not watching this live the summary that is below the video i'm gonna try and run this through uh through swell and see what comes out this has been a very complicated conversation, which is why I think it's going to be fun to do. And I can't wait to see if it tries well, to do something with the uh, the pizza video. <laughs> yeah, uh, I can't wait. <laughs> uh, in one of our videos, somebody misspoke about who the guest was. And ooh, it latched onto that. So it's, <laughs> it's not perfect, but yeah. <laughs> anyway, definitely interesting. Lots of stuff going on. Uh, in this space right now and uh, appreciate you uh, bringing the information to us. And as always, I look forward to what we talk about next time. Hello YouTube, thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this episode of The Pilch Point with Avram Pilch. Uh, if you did, 
Please subscribe to our channel and, of course, hit the notification bell since subscriptions don't mean much on YouTube anymore. Uh, and if you've got topics you'd like us to discuss in the future, we'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Uh, if you don't want to follow us on YouTube, that's okay. There's a lot of other ways that you can follow our content. You can find all of that by going to plughitslive.com slash subscribe. There you'll see all of our shows and all the different ways that you can watch, listen, and follow along.